So we're now on to the next two couples tying the knot. First of all, we have Lara and Richie. Lara is 49 and is a waitress. She's originally from Canada and has two kids. And she's also been married twice. Plus, she's a professional dancer too. She describes herself as not being the greatest picker of men. Her choices have been dire. Her list of requirements of what she's looking for in a guy is somebody that has a rock or indie background. For she's looking for somebody with a bit of fun about them. For her past relationships have been quite controlling. And let's not forget, someone with a full head of hair. Yes, that's what she said. And then we have Richie, who is 51, and he's a retail assistant. He used to be in a rock band, so definitely up her street. He lives with his parents though, and he doesn't have any kids, and he's never been married. Am I seeing red flags? Oh dear. This doesn't sound good. But he seems like a nice guy. So let's just see where this goes. Fast forward to the big day. We saw Lara getting ready, getting her makeup done, getting her hair done and speaking to her girlfriend. And with their conversation, they were talking about her kids. She turned around and said, her kids come first. And if they don't get on with her new husband, it's not going to work. That's virtually what she said. And then secondly, she mentioned, because she's been married twice, and this being her third wedding, if it doesn't work this time, she's giving up on love. That's what she said. Then we saw Richie getting dressed, and he was talking about the stakes are very, very high for him. He only wants to get married once. And as he said, I can say I'm happy, but I've never been truly happy. And he goes on to say, you're never truly happy without the true love of another person. And for him to get married this way is the only solution. That's what he said. The next scene we saw was Richie approaching the wedding venue. He was looking extremely nervous. This is his first time and hopefully it will be his last time in getting married. So he enters the venue he says hello to everybody, so that was very polite of him. Then he goes across and shakes the bride's mother's hand. And then he goes over to his own mother and gives her a hug. I saw the son of the bride make a comment about, oh, he didn't give me a handshake. No, he didn't. Because he's already nervous already. And he doesn't know who you are. So let's just let that go. Shortly after, we saw the bride arrive, led down the aisle by her father. And when Richie turned around to see her, he was actually gobsmacked. Yes, totally gobsmacked. He thought, wow. Wow. The matchmakers did a good job. He got what he ordered. Those were his words. And when meeting, they gave each other a hug. When talking to the camera, she did say in regards to his looks. She said if she was to see him on the street, her reaction wouldn't be, oh my God, that guy. But he does have a full head of hair. So that was a bonus. So next we saw them exchange their vows, exchange their rings, etc, etc. And then they were pronounced man and wife. And they sealed it with a kiss. Her first impression of her new husband was that he's kind and funny. He was cracking her up during the whole ceremony. And she's hoping that Jaden, her son, is on board. And when it came to Richie, he was excited to have a ring on his finger. He said, I am officially a husband now. So next we saw these guys getting their photos taken and... They started asking each other questions. So we found out that Richie is from Sheffield and Lara's from Nottingham. 
And then Richie mentioned about he used to play there in his rock days at the venue Rock City. Ah, memories. I remember those days. But I wasn't into rock music. This was house music. Anyway, I digressed. Continuing on, she was excited to hear that he was an ex-rocker. Definitely ticked her boxes. But then, she discovered that he lived at home with his parents and that he has never been married and doesn't have any kids. That there was a red flag. That's what she said. But at the same time, she says she's willing to give him a chance. And then the conversation steered towards children. She turned around and said she had two kids. He was quite surprised to hear that. And she said, does that bother you? And he turned around and said it didn't, but you could see him sweating. His face said it all, to be honest. He looked nervous. And then when you saw him speak to the camera afterwards, he said that's quite daunting that, that she's got kids. But I'm thinking to myself, hang on a minute. Let me get this straight. You are 51 years old. She is 49. What the hell did you expect? What planet are you on? 90% of the time, you're going to find women in their 40s, 50s will have a multitude of kids. Where have you been? Again, what planet are you on? I definitely understand the red flags. He's been living that single life for too damn long. Oh dear. Moving on, we then saw them enter the reception hall and be greeted with a large round of applause. When sitting at the top table, Lara was very conscious of her son Jaden, that she went over to him and asked him whether he wanted to meet Richie. I thought, oh, this is a little awkward moment. There was a slight pause, but then he turned around and said, yes, I would. He's very protective of his mum, very protective, because she's been through so much in regard to divorces, relationships, and he's been traumatised by the family in a way, because both parents have had multiple marriages. So he doesn't believe in marriage in the same way. And that could be traumatic for a child. And he is... 19. Yeah. And so eventually he met with Richie and then Lara left them to it. Rather than be hovering around them, she left them to it to talk. Initially I thought, oh, is this going to be awkward? But they found a common ground because they're both into rock music. So I think that was a good sort of subject to start with and things just flowed thereafter. So while she left those two talking, she went over and sat with her mum and she was talking to her mum about Richie. The mum really likes Richie. She really likes Richie. She actually said to her daughter, out of all your husbands, this is the one I like. I really like him. She was actually shocked to hear that. Absolutely shocked. We also hear Jaden give his mum his approval. He likes Richie. The next scene we saw was the bride and groom go off separately to have a private moment. And Richie serenaded her with a song that he had written. She was overwhelmed with tears and gave him the biggest hug. Thereafter, you saw them go back to the reception and join the others and danced the night away, before slowly slipping off to their hotel. And when they arrived in their room, they were met with petals on the bed, the usual. And these guys, well, she said, she doesn't do sex on the first date. You're going to have to wait for three days for that to happen. Something like that, she said. So they just hugged it out on the bed and laid in each other's arms. And that was it. So we're just going to have to wait and see what happens to these guys, how their honeymoon goes. 
So now on to Jess and PJ. Starting with Jess, she's 30 and she's a dental hygienist. She's also a Harry Potter fanatic. She's been single for four years, but was previously in a relationship for five years. That relationship ended when she found her boyfriend downstairs sleeping with her father's ex-wife. I just had to think about that. Yeah, her father's ex-wife. What a sight to come down to. The poor girl was traumatised and it broke the relationship within the family. She also had a close friend that she classed as a sister that passed away in a car accident. So that's the other trauma that she's experienced. And that was only last year. Oh dear, poor girl. To describe her ideal man, she's looking for somebody trustworthy. Yeah, she's got trust issues because of what's happened. So she's looking for somebody trustworthy, kind and caring and respectful. Those are her requirements. Moving on to PJ. He's 31 and a professional dancer stroke performer. He's actually one of the dream boys. A stripper. He too is a Harry Potter fan. Yep, another fanatic. He actually describes himself as a big friendly bear. A happy person, a humble person. He was in a relationship for seven years and he split with that partner. And out of that, he has a five-year-old boy. And presently, he has been single for a year. The hang-ups he has is that people misjudge him because of his job. And I have to agree, we do. We really do. But listening to him talk, you can see he is a big friendly giant. He really is. But the title of what he does as a job is going to be his hindrance. And a lot of people aren't going to be able to see past that. Moving on to his requirements. He's looking for someone that must love children. Is a Harry Potter fanatic. Is respectful. And if we're looking at aesthetics, he likes brunettes. Someone with beautiful eyes. And a good smile. And also is not afraid to be themselves. Yeah. So that's the background of our couple. Moving on to the wedding. We saw Jess already made up, beautifully dressed, ready to meet her husband. She was extremely excitable. She had her family there for support. Her mum more so. Because when you saw her speaking into the camera, she said, I hope he has a decent job and has ambition. Those were her words. And by the look of her, she takes no nonsense. Moving on to PJ, we saw him getting dressed, looking very nervous. He's very stressed about telling his new wife that he has a son, as well as the job that he does. I can see that's going to be very daunting. It's not even about the son. No, to have one child, I don't see as a big thing. But the job that you do, yeah, that's, a gonna, that's gonna be a red flag for her. Anyway, moving forward, we saw him walking down the aisle with a bunch of flowers in his hand. And I thought, ah, that's, that's exactly how I expect you to do it. The first thing he did was give the bunch of flowers to his new mother-in-law. To set a good impression. Yeah, I, I like that move. But I think you did it purposely at the same time. To cushion the blow for later. Her mother did compliment him. She did say, oh, he's good looking. He's very fit. He seems kind. Yeah, I'm liking what I see so far. That's what she said. 
That's what she said. We then see Jess being walked down the aisle by her father. And when PJ turns around to see her, he's flawed. He's thinking, wow. Wow. He's thinking, she's exactly what I ordered. She's brunette, has nice eyes and has a lovely smile. Exactly what he ordered. They gave each other a kiss on the cheek. And she turned around and says he had a lovely smile and he smelt nice. And she felt much more at ease knowing what he looked like. Yeah, this was definitely a good start. This girl was definitely excitable about the future. She definitely has a big personality. Because she turned around to the guests and greeted them with maybe two or three big hellos. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. She definitely has a big personality. And then she said something to PJ about, oh, did you say hello to my mum? And her mum interrupted by saying, he's already given me flowers. So with her hearing that, he had earned brownie points already. Fast forward, we both saw them read their vows and found out they had a connection to Harry Potter. That's convenient, isn't it? Very coincidental, that's written in the vowels. Yeah. Anyway, they exchanged rings, exchanged a kiss, and that was the ceremony over. The next thing we saw was them walking off into the sunset to have their photos taken. And as usual, we saw the same questions being asked. Where do you live? No, sorry. She said, do you have your own place? And he turned around and says, I used to, but I no longer do. I live at home with my parents. That's what he said. She didn't really flinch too much at that. And then he turned around and said that he has a child. There was a slight pause, but she accepted that. She said, ah, oh, do you want any more kids? And he said, I definitely do. And she wants kids, of course, as well. The conversation then steered towards what they did for work. She turned around and said she's a dental hygienist. And then when he was asked what he did for work, he said, before I start, please don't judge. That's what he said. So already her head was thinking, oh God, this doesn't sound good. So first of all, he turned around and said he's a performer. And she said, okay. Then he said he was a dancer. And again, she said, okay. And then lastly, he said he was a stripper. And her face went as white as a ghost. When talking to the camera, she said, I don't want to go out with a stripper. She said, I don't know how my mum's going to feel about this. That's what she said. She was trying her best to keep a brave face upon hearing all of this. But the emotions took over. We saw her in floods of tears. She said, I don't want to do this anymore. That's what she said. I do not want to do this anymore. And then we saw her run off. Cut. End of scene. The next scene we saw was PJ sitting at the top table in the reception with no bride by his side. Yes, all alone. The poor girl was sitting outside, shivering, in her thoughts, not knowing what to do with herself. We then see her mum join her to find out what's going on. And she's asking her daughter, what's up? Her daughter's saying, I just want to go home. I just want to go home. I don't want to be here anymore. I just don't want to be here anymore. 
And her mum's asking her, but why? And then she turns around and says, he's a stripper. And he lives at home with his mum. That's what she said. And the first words to come out of the mother's mouth was, fuck off. Pardon my French. The mum then continues to say, so is that his ambition? And then Jess turns around and says, he's such a lovely guy. Everything about him I like. Even the mum was even praising him. But the job? Uh, red flag. Red flag. Red flag. The poor girl was inconsolable. Her mum just had to give her a huge hug. Because she was inconsolable. She was so worried about how people would view her, how her friends would see her, and her being teased. Yes, that's what she said. The next scene we saw was back in the reception. Everybody's still waiting on the bride. Yes, she's still missing. She's very apprehensive about wanting to come back in and embarrassing herself. Yeah, that's where her head's at. But we eventually see her walk in. She said to the camera, she owes it to him. So we saw her walking back into the reception and everybody clapped. Yeah. Her mum whispered in her ear, are you okay? Everything all right? Yeah. And then we saw the mum speak. So she got PJ's attention. And then she said, so you do this for a living. So you get your kegs, kegs off. Kegs or kegs off. And you have women rubbing baby all over you. So you're going to have my daughter sitting at home on a Saturday night while women rub baby oil all over you. That was a showstopper. He was stuck for words. And then he said, I don't expect to be doing this forever. That's what he said. She had a ton of questions for him. She also asked him, how long do you intend to be doing this for? And he said, hopefully not for long. She asked him, where do you see yourself in five years time? And he said, that's a good question. And she said, I have a ton of those for you. Yes, that's what she said. I really want to get into events and planning, something like that, he said. And she turned around and said, where do you want to be in five years time and how the fuck are you going to get there? Because my daughter needs someone that's going to support her. That's what she said. Pardon my language. We then see Jess interrupt by saying, oh, she's just looking out for me. And then her mum says to her, don't justify me. He needs to step up. The last thing you want to happen is for me and you to fall out and to get on the wrong side of me. That's what she said. Mummy was not ramping. She was looking out for her daughter. She was not playing. Woo! This woman, I love her spirit. I really do. But the language leaves a lot to be desired. Again, pardon my French. When we later saw PJ speaking into the camera, he looked like a deer in headlights. He was like, whew, she's a lot. It looks like I'm going to have to buy more roses to get on the good side of her. Something like that, he said. The conversation continues with him talking about why he got into the business. It was all about the money and he was doing it for his son and just for survival. But with him having a wife... He knows he needs to step up more. Even if it means him having to find two or three jobs to make it work, he'll do it. He's never had an incentive to do it before. But now his head is there. And with the mum hearing that and also Jess hearing that, their face is changed, their persona changed, and they're willing to give him a chance. And as the mum says, I just need him to step up. Show us what you're made of. The next scene we saw was with the two of them outside discussing the events of today. 
yeah. As he said, that was a lot. And as she said, yeah, it was. But they seem to have come to some sort of agreement that this could work. They seem very happy together. And as he said to her, you had me at hello. Now, where's that from? What film is that from? Oh, hang on. Jerry Maguire. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we saw them round off that conversation with a nice kiss. Moving on from there, we saw them leave the reception and head to the hotel. On entering the room, the first thing we saw Jess do was say to PJ, oh, I've got something to show you. And she showed him a tattoo of Harry Potter on her thigh. And he turned around and said behind that, I like you even more now. Something like that, he said. Yeah. These two are Harry Potter fanatics. And how old are they again? Hmm. We then saw these two dressed for bed. Jess was in the bed. PJ was in the bed. And there was a divider between them. As she said, there'll be no action tonight. But didn't she say at the hen party that she would do it on the first day? Hmm. But because of all that's happened today, it wasn't going to happen. She was very conscious it wasn't going to happen. Not tonight. And with that being said, he was ready to turn off the lights. Then he said camera. And then he said, no action. Never mind. We're just going to have to wait and see how the honeymoon goes now. So on that note, this is where I'll leave it. If you like what you heard, please like, comment and subscribe. Till next time.